Hey guys, welcome back. Joe here again, skillfreak.com. Coming to bring you another Sunday video blog. It is Sunday here in the uh, wonderfulness of Canada. Um, I guess it would be Sunday everywhere, wouldn't it? Uh, well, maybe not everywhere. There's some areas that are like 12 hours ahead of us now that would make it, uh, you know, Monday morning. Sorry guys, it's already Monday. It's the start of your work week. At least I get the rest of the afternoon. Anyway, I'm just playing guys, welcome. Like I said, Joe here, Scale Freak, bringing the video blog this week, um, to kind of talk about a few of the things that we've been up to this week, uh, and some of the stuff that you're going to see again very, very shortly. Um, we have a lot of questions again for bench questions, guys. Thank you very much. So I'll get the, uh, the group assembled this week. Um, we'll rip out another bench questions. I hope to have that posted, it edited, recorded, edited, and posted by early next week. Let's aim for, I'm not going to even set a date because sometimes stuff gets in the way ridiculously busy at work right now. Sometimes things get in the way, so I don't want to make a full commitment on a date. Just know that as the spring goes, uh, more and more will be coming. So guys, thank you very much for all of your questions. If you want to send your question in, it's benchquestions at gmail.com. Uh, and remember, it is a panel question, so you want to get something in that we can answer as a group. Um, it doesn't have to be about scale stuff. It doesn't have to be about crawlers. It can be about racing. Uh, we all have a pretty good racing background. It could be about scale, could be about drifting, could be about, man, it could be about anything. Uh, nitro, we're not very good at. I'm, I'm terrible at nitro. I wouldn't, if you were to say, hey, what about nitro? I'd be like, I, I, I'm sorry, guys, I probably won't even put the question in the show. I'm just that bad with nitro. But anyway, moving on from that, lots more build stuff going on, right? So the, the, the recent vote for the 2015 Scale Freak, I always have to remember the name, 2015 Scale Freak Viewer's Choice Rig, we just finished the vote for the power system, and Holmes Hobbies, you guys get a huge thumbs up. Uh, over, f I think it was over 57% of the vote or something like that for the, uh, the Torque Master waterproof system with the 13-turn motor. Wow, a lot of support for that. So I'm going to reach out to John and just let him know that Scale Freak is on his side. So that I kind of want to, I can't wait to get that system in to check to see what it's like. Overwhelming. Uh, overwhelming request that the next vote be about the servo. So I think that's actually what I'm going to do. One of the servos that has been suggested is the Holmes Hobby servo. So I think what I may do is bump up the vote for the servo a little sooner than I thought I was going to um, so that if it winds up being the Holmes Hobby servo that wins, I can just put it all in the same order and uh, really, really eliminate the need for extra shipping. Remember, guys, most of the stuff I get for the RC Hobby is from the States. Bring it into Canada, yikes, shipping becomes a little chaos. All of a sudden, your tracking numbers don't work. All of a sudden, the UPS customs stuff is just, just forget it. Uh, I'm lucky enough to live close to the States that a lot of the stuff I can get shipped into, uh, into Niagara Falls, New York. Um, some stuff has to come directly to Canada, which, you know what? Sometimes the customs guys just say, yep, send it through. Sometimes the customs guys say, we're going to hold this for like a month. Maybe more. Really, guys. There are times where I don't get something for over a month after it lands in customs. The tracking number will stop in customs, and it takes another month, month and a week before it actually lands at my house. And, of course, it's got the tape on it. Like, they opened it up. They inspected it. And there's even sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they literally just, I think sometimes they just forgot it was there. But I love my customs, guys. Thank you guys for keeping my, uh, my country safe. If it says Joe Ferguson on it, just, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> So we did see the project. There's a lot of stuff going on. So you guys know that if you look through all my threads and stuff or on my playlists and stuff like that, I do have a lot of build videos going on. Of course, there is the F-bomb over here. I love this truck. This thing's going to be with me for a while. I can't wait to get some run stuff done, especially with the portal axles and stuff like that installed. Uh, and of course, there is the Red Devil Recon. This thing's going to see a lot of trail time this summer. And I'm going to do, uh, well, between the two of these things, I'm going to do some neat winch videos. Uh, I'm going to get someone to come with me and, and do some kind of... Uh, uh, some examples of, of, of winching people out and recovery scenarios and things like that. I've got, actually got a lot of requests for that. A lot of people have requested that, and thank you. That's a great idea. I'm going to do it. Of course, this one here you're going to start to see a little bit more about. You're not going to see as much about this truck as you may see for the rest of these things here. The reason being because this new project, this new JK project, and I know I posted some pictures on the, the Scale Freak Instagram, and a lot of people are saying, another SCX-10? Yeah, Absolutely. I love this truck, and you know what? I've got all the parts for this truck. I've got a, a bin of spares. Why wouldn't I go with another SCX-10? 
But this truck here is for myself. This one here, I'm going to build it as a truck or as a rig, as a Jeep that I want to own. So this will probably be uh, maybe one of my, my more scale projects. It's still gonna be a Lexan body for now, um, but one of my more scale projects. I've got some really great stuff coming in for it. Uh, as you can see, I've already got a Vanquish light bar on it. I've got the Vanquish mounts. Um, and I've already picked up, in, you know what, wait. I'll, I'll do a video on this uh, and, and just introduce some of the parts quickly so you can see kind of what's going on with that rig. But just know that this one's coming as well. So between, oh, and this, of course, here is your viewer's choice truck so far. It's still in pieces. I have not started the build yet. Um, this is coming soon as well. Again, I just need to get through February at work. Then it slows down a little bit, uh, in which case that's when the filming will start on all of these wonderful, beautiful GCM parts. I can't stress to you how amazing these things are. Like the, the, the craftsmanship is phenomenal. And man, I love all of the support that you guys are putting on there for GCM. All of a sudden, everyone's posting pictures. Here's my J2. I just ordered a J2. My build starts on my J2. This is my first screw in my... It's amazing what you guys are doing with this guy. If you've ever met Chris, if you ever had the opportunity to meet him, because this guy travels all over the place to help support you guys, dude, you'll love this guy. He's amazing. And make sure you head over to his YouTube channel as well to, to watch his videos. Support what he does because, guys, he... He, it is his only job in life is to build RC parts and get them out to you guys. And he, I think he does a great job with his, with his research and development and his, his machining is nuts, like nuts in the best way. And he does a great job at getting it to you guys at a, at a, at a price that is, actually it's very good. Uh, I can get this stuff in Canada for cheaper than I can buy the alternative in the States, uh, which is, can't even say there's an alternative. He actually really is kind of a cut above a lot of people. I mean, you guys have seen on the F-Bomb that this has GCM wheels on it. Love them. Absolutely amazing. You'll see more stuff from the GCM garage in the Scale Freak studio. Uh, kind of a big fan of his stuff, so you'll see some more stuff coming. So yeah, now there's technically four rigs on the desk. Uh, so I have to now split my limited RC finance between four rigs. Uh, and of course, that doesn't stop me for the fact that I still really want a Trail Finder 2, and I actually really, 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 really want an Ascender. I love the design of it, and I really want to try it. I want to spend a lot of time wheeling this summer. I would love to get an Ascender to be able to compare everything with the Ascender, as well as the TF2, as well as the GCM. Get some, get, let's burn some rubber, right? So that's all that stuff there. Uh, also, Preparation is well underway uh, for the Canadian on road, the Canadian on road nationals that's going to be happening in the Seaway Mall. I have mentioned this a few times, guys, um, and for anybody who got a chance to see it last year, it was the biggest year that there's ever been. And for, I mean, even RCTV, if you're in Canada and you've seen RCTV, he was there last year, and I actually got to do a bit of an interview with him. It was pretty cool. He's a nice guy, uh, and he was there reviewing everything. So um, look, just look back in my history from last year. You'll see the video that I got to talk to. Uh, to Rack to talk about, you know, well, he was there look, interviewing drivers and stuff like that. And people came from all around the world. And I, and I don't just mean like figuratively. I mean, literally, there was a guy from Lebanon there who lives in Lebanon and flew over for that event because he heard it was amazing. Uh, so he came back for it. It was, it was such a cool event. He was, his mind was blown at how crazy it was. I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, if you do make it to an event like that, please, please stop by the director's tower and say hello to me. Um, I'll be the guy with the microphone on, losing my mind about all of the cars racing around the track. And uh, I'm going to ask the Antler and Steve if they can just kind of wander around with the video camera, uh, maybe ask some drivers some questions. I'd love to make you guys a video uh, of, of what the major race events look like. Um, and thinking of that, you know what, over at the bench questions as well, why don't you email some questions that you'd like to know about racing, uh, about a race event. It doesn't have to be... In this specific one, I, I, I think what I want to do is a Q&A video on racing events and race directing and, and what to expect at your first race event, major event, or even minor event. I don't know. Um, but throw those in bench questions, and I'll do a show on that too. I, I've, I've been doing the race thing for a long time, and like I said, I've gone from everywhere from, from, from just being a racer to owning a track to building the tracks to setting up sponsors to setting up the events to bringing in food trucks. I... It's a pretty big 
undertaking to be able to do something like that. And for the people who are saying, I'd love to know how to do stuff like this, I'm more than happy to make a video for you to explain some of the ins and outs, some of the do's and don'ts, some of the stuff to really, really watch for, and some of the stuff to get really, really, really excited for when it comes to race events. So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, speaking of the race events, if you've been watching Parker's uh, Instagram and Facebook page at all right now, he's down at Motorama. Motorama is one of the largest events that you're going to get in North America when it comes to off-road racing. And this year, they're having a bit of a G6 there, which I'm looking at everything, and it is absolutely amazing what they're posting. The level of scale trucks that are there, the level of people that are there, it, they're really, you know what, they're introducing a, a, a scale in an absolute, you couldn't put a better light on it if you had studio lights to these off-road guys at how amazing this stuff really is. And it's blowing my mind that they were able to make it there and do this. The same thing with the, with the King of the Hammers, right? All of a sudden you've got Hammer Town. It used to be a desert. All of a sudden it's a town down in the desert for King of the Hammer, and they go down in there and do a G6 there as well. So these people who are driving around on their big rigs, hey, why don't you make a small version and come on and wheel that as well? Blowing my mind what Parker's up to. Big thumbs up, you know, two big thumbs up to what Parker's been up to in the past couple of years. And, uh, I mean, he's been here before. He, he hung out here with my dogs, slept on my couch, cuddled with my dogs. Parker, if you see this video, Raven really misses you. She'd love some more cuddles. <laughs> um, so we've got that coming as well. Make sure you go check out the Motorama stuff. Go check out Parker, man. The guy, it's Driven MF, D-R-I-V, um, I think it's I-N-M-F. Uh, and then you're going to find them, or you can check out the Scale Freak, uh, the Scale Freak uh, Instagram, and then just look in my following list because I follow that guy everywhere. So Instagram, everywhere. So that's, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't really want to let this one go too long in the tooth. It's really just to say there's more videos coming for here. You've got to go check out what Parker's up to at Motorama, um, and, and the new vote for the servo will be coming soon for this bad boy here. I'm going to cut this one short because I'm actually going to do another video right now about... The, the Project JK, talk a little bit more about what I've done so far and what the plans are for the truck and, uh, and what other cool parts I've got heading on the way. So guys, thank you very much. Um, thank you, thank you very much for, for watching the channel. Uh, make sure you click on the like button. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. It's actually, interestingly enough, I wanted to, I, my goal this year in 2015 is to get this to uh, 10,000 subscribers. And I went to Social Blade the other day and there's kind of a, uh, uh, a section that you can go to that, that checks to say, you know, based on how your channel has been growing, you can expect to be here at this time. It says I'm going to hit 10,000 subscribers in June. What do you guys think? If I keep curating content like this, will people keep coming? Or are you sharing this out there so other people can see what's going on and they're clicking subscribe? Of course, guys, click below on the comment section as well. I love to see the conversation that's happening in there. And of course, if you have any questions, I check that very often. I get updates most of the time from YouTube, and I will answer your questions directly down there as well. So feel free to ask some questions. I love to get in there and type away and get a response to you. Um, and of course, please, like I said, share this throughout the community. Um, there used to be a time where I would spam the world with all of these videos, but what I found is that it was the same people usually throughout all the same groups. So if I posted it on eight different groups, that person would go like, 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 so I don't want to spam all your feeds. So instead, what I do is I really just post it, uh, of course, on the Scale Freak Facebook, and I also post it on the RC Militia Facebook. Oddly, uh, odd time here and there, I may post it on a, on a, a video on a, uh, a, a business page of a product that I was just reviewing. So sometimes that happens as well. So guys, again, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. These lights are very bright. You guys have a great day.